mention, most of you don't know the history of the Battle Hymn of the Republic. The history of that song is during the Civil War, there was a woman, there was a song that was written with this tune. And there was a woman that uh, had been thinking about, she was a poet, and thinking about writing words to encourage those fighting for abolishing slavery and making all men free. And so along that time ran into one of the, one of the people said, why don't you write a, a words for this song? And she said, I've been thinking about that. And so she was, uh, she, she had thought about it and it was mulling in her mind. And she says, I woke up the next morning and quick as I could, it was flowing to me so easily. I pinned these words and the words are definitely about Jesus. The South got really angry. The people who were slave owners got angry about this song because they said the song says God is on your side on this war. And I say, yes, God was on the north side because God hates slavery. And Jesus said these words. He says, in my kingdom, there is no free man or slave. You may be on earth a slave, but in my eyes, you're not. Because freedom in Christ is, really matters. And he also says there's no male or female. While we're, they're different, what he's saying is there's no, you know, because in that culture, women were possessions and, and looked down upon. And, 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 you know, Jesus, Jesus gave dignity to women by saying they're valuable. And I will, I will publicly say that the Southern Baptists, and I love them, I went to Baylor University and there's great churches, but they're wrong because of kicking out a big church from their movement because they had a female minister. And women are valuable. And our female pastors are awesome. You know, Pastor Kareem, Courtney, and, and some of you may not have pay for your pastoring, but some of you women pastor people because it's not the paid people that carry the gifts, but there's many of you that have a shepherd's heart. So I just, I just, wanted, I just wanted to say so that you get the full meaning of that song. Uh, how many of you raised your hand and said, I did not know that? Raise it up. Now, we thought it's a revolutionary war song, what, didn't we? It's not. And I'm going to tell you, God wants all people to be free. And I'm thankful that America enjoys freedom. I'm thankful for many nations that enjoy freedom. And I'm grateful and pray that, that all of us together can champion freedom because uh, Putin obviously doesn't, doesn't share our convictions in fact, anyone that's a dictator or comes and runs over people to dominate another land, like he's done uh, the largest European nation, Ukraine, is uh, of the spirit of Antichrist because the Antichrist wants to rule and he's wanted to a long time. In fact, the, my message title today is War. And uh, That was me. Oh my goodness, I had hair. Who is that? that I look, I'm cutting up a turkey. That's Bud Christinger. That's Jeff Hill, James Weaver. That's in Branson. Pastor Jeff, I love that picture of you, man. I, I keep that on my car. I don't have any humor in this message, so I told him if they... Kevin Marshall found these funny pictures and he wanted to put them up there. I said, okay. But anyway, the, it's, it's war. And uh, I, I just get back to the topic here. And this war started in heaven. And uh, it started when we call, you can call him Lucifer, the dragon, the devil, but Satan wants to be God. He wanted to be God and he rebelled. He thinks he can. In fact, he thinks he's still gonna win. Do you know that? I mean, he, he's deceived at the end. He's gonna rule. He's gonna be God. He's deceptive, he's deceived. And I mean, obviously he was deceived. He thought he could overcome God. He's in heaven, he saw God's power, but he must've been given a lot of power as the highest angel. The third of the angels rebelled and they were kicked out. And in Isaiah 14, 12 to 13, <laughs> of the scripture, Isaiah, let's hear it for the scripture. It's silent about the Bible. Come on, that's, that was good. If you're, if you're joining us online, but you know, in here, uh, uh, I think Pastor Jeff talks about you should get excited about the Bible. We announce the text like, we're going to read this, go, yeah, scripture. You know, okay, so that's what's going on there. So Isaiah talks about uh, Satan, and our first thought is we're at war. That's the title, but war against Satan 
and demons. War against Satan and demons, point one. Isaiah 14, 12 to 13 says, how, oh, how you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of dawn. Talking about Lucifer. You have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. Satan someday, the Antichrist, is going to go in the temple in Israel and declare himself God and tell everybody to bow down. We see this in the, the book telling about end times in the book of Revelation. And uh, that's, going to be a bad, that's going to be a bad time. That's when he starts to make it, everybody take the mark of the beast and he starts murdering people. That's halfway through the seven years of God's judgment called the Great Tribulation. First three and a half years are hard. The second three and a half years are horrible. He comes open. It starts with a peace treaty with Israel. And in uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, you see uh, it represents the church being taken to heaven. John is called up in heaven, and he says, I'll show you the things that are going to take place in the future, hitherto. And I, 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 want you, I want you to understand that I understand people believe that Jesus is going to come halfway through the great tribulation seven years, and some believe at the very end. I don't care what you believe about that. I, it's not a, it doesn't matter. He's going to come. So you just be ready no matter what. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You just be ready no matter what. It's not, Paul says, don't be squabbling over little differences like that. You know, we got pre-trib, you got mid-trib, you got post-trib. And I, I always told you that I believe in pan-trib. It's going to pan out in the end. He's going to come back and he's the judge. And uh, it's going to, what's going to be, is going to be. So then we'll find out, right? And so, and I know I'll be right. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but you know, you'll be right too. And I still love you. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but the main pe people don't want, want, want you to be discouraged if you see horrible things happening and he hadn't come back like, well, this book must not be real. Well, guess what? We've seen a horrible things. And if that does happen, if that does happen and I'm wrong, we go through a tribulation. You know, keep your eyes on Jesus because I believe this book, right? I mean, uh, those that went to El Salvador this week, they had teenagers telling me and different ones telling me they saw uh, well, Michael Cochran saying he, I, he saw, or someone else was maybe, I don't know if it was Michael for sure, but he said, I saw like five or six right before my eyes. And was it you, Michael? Incredible miracles. I, just like incredible physical miracles. And we had, we had another one happen. I, I don't have time to tell you all that, but I get off. But I'm going to tell you, the book is right. Okay. The book is right. And, and de the devil started war, and he started war in enmity because sin uh, brings division between us and God. God has to fix that, but it causes division between man and men and women and families that break up and friends that break up and, and countries, and it causes division. You know, who said this? A house divided against itself cannot stand. Who said that? No, Jesus said it. Abe Lincoln was quoting Jesus. I knew someone would say that. And so Satan, man, he is, he is a slick little dude, you know. The, the, a mighty fortress is our God says there, that we, there's no foe equal to him. And we're no match to him. But we have Jesus in us. He is a match. And we better be having him on our side. In fact, the Lord taught us to pray and deliver us from the evil one. The actual words are not evil, but the evil one. Because he's after you. And he's at war against you. How many believe in Jesus and you want to go to heaven and you put your hope in Jesus? Right. He hates you. Especially you. He hates Jews and he hates Christians because God chose to bring his son Jesus through the Jewish nation, Israeli. He hates you. The Revelation 12, 9 says, the great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil or the Satan, who leads the whole world astray. Who leads the world astray? Satan. Who is behind, who was behind Hitler? Who is behind, who's behind Putin? Who's behind anyone that wants to take freedom? Because if you had Satan ruling, there would be no freedom. It would be dominating and it would be evil and it would be ugly. And we see even pastors that rule like that. I, I call them pastors of Christian churches that aren't Christians because they use for their kingdom people and they use them, burn them up, throw them to the side and they're dominate and they do this. And anytime you do this to people, you don't let the spirit move through them and you, you quelch them and they can be controlled by the law. That's why Jesus condemned the Pharisees because they had nothing of the spirit. They had the law. 
and they were trying to do this to the people in ancient Jerusalem when Jesus was born. And he called them out, called them, he said, hypocrites and much other things, the religious leaders of, of Judaism at the time. Because Jesus is for freedom, folks. He's for freedom. And so is the Bible. However, he's more for salvation. He's more for salvation and to free you from sin because he came into this earth with the Roman rule and his followers kept figuring, when are, you, when are we gonna get these Romans off our back? So after they've been full of the spirit, after they've seen miracle after miracle, after he made it clear what he came to do, in Acts 1, when he's saying he's about to ascend to heaven, they say, well, when are you gonna restore the kingdom to Israel? When are you gonna throw the Romans out? And he said, well, don't, that, don't, that's not for you to know the time of that. I mean, I'm gonna give you the Holy Spirit so you can be my witness. In other words, I wanna see people come to Christ and I wanna give you the power of the Spirit. You know why our witness is so weak? It's because we, we don't have enough fullness of God. The Spirit of God is what brings people to Christ. It convicts them of truth, the Spirit of truth. And when the Holy Spirit is full in us, that convicts people and then your words have power. When we have theology and we have doctrine, it can be correct. It can be the four spiritual laws. It can be the, the detail. But if you don't have Jesus alive in you, then your witness is powerless. There's something about the Holy Spirit. And Paul, he would walk around. There were times that these guys, back when they were first starting the church, and they would walk, their shadow would fall on people and they couldn't stand because the power of God was so powerful. I'm gonna tell you, there's a, a, a dimension that we can walk in that most people never know and it's why our nation don't, doesn't believe the truth because the, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and that truth needs to have power. The sword of the spirit, it needs to impact them right to the heart to say, oh me. I'm a man of unclean lips because I see the presence of God and we need to carry the presence of God everywhere we go. We need to have more of God in us. We're in a war. We're in a war against Satan and demons. That's the person, that's the people. And I'm gonna tell you, they're real. Demons organized. They have princes just like the angels do. They are organized over parts of the world and they plan and they, they attack. When they see something good somewhere, guess what? They're gonna attack that. I can guarantee you every time. And it says he was, Revelation 12, 9 said he was hurled to the earth with his angels with him. That's where the demons came from and that's Satan. He's here and the Bible says he's the prince and power of the air. He, and you know, the Bible says this world, talking about not the earth, the globe, talking about not the physical planet, but the world meaning the, 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 not, not of the spirit that consists of these things to not love it because it consists of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Girls, gold and glory. For, for, the, for you women, it'd be men, gold, and glory, but it doesn't have the G alliteration, you know, girls, gold, glory. I mean, basically, he's trying to get everyone somewhere. So if you don't have a problem with flesh lust, you may have a problem with pride. You may have a problem with greed, which is eye lust, actually both. So I'm telling you, this world is after you. I mean, Satan's after you, and he's trying to bring you down. And you need to walk holy and be close to God so you can have, when you pray, you pray a covering that's powerful over your family, over your children, over your grandchildren to protect them against the enemy who is a liar. Satan is a liar. We're at war with Satan and we're at war at his, against his lies. Satan is large. 1 John 3, 8. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared, look at this, was to destroy the devil's work. The devil works in people and he wants to destroy that work. He doesn't want to have an influence over you. In fact, Peter writes, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Uh, uh, he says uh, that he's running around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, he is, he is, he, you need to realize this guy's an enemy. Do, you better pray that Lord's prayer. Deliver us from the evil one. You better have your eyes alert that he will put you to sleep and do whatever he can to do elude you because he wants you to go to hell. He hates you. He hates you. We're at war against Satan and the demons. And when Jesus was tempted, he was fasting and praying at the time. And Jesus, who was fully man as though he were not God at all, and fully God as if he was not man at all, this Jesus had been fasting, reading the word, and praying. And that dumb Satan approaches him while he's fasting, and three times tempts him. He is so arrogant, not only does he try to take over heaven, he tries to take God's own son, God incarnate, and he tries to trick him 
into sinning. And I mean, Jesus was fully man at this point. He didn't overcome that temptation. It says in scripture before that, that he went there to pray being full of the Holy Spirit. And we know he is full of the word and we know he went along to pray and we know he knew all the law and prophets. We know he could quote scripture all the time. And so that's what he does. He quotes it against Satan who's the enemy trying to bring him down. Let me tell you something, church. We're not gonna be powerful until we meditate on the word. Psalm 1.1, in the, in the, it talks about the, the, to, to meditate on the word. It's in Psalm chapter one. It says you'll be, if you, if you meditate on the word, you take the word, you'll be like the tree planted by the water and you won't be moved. I'm gonna tell you something. The number one reason that you see revivals happening is people that have been chewing on the word and meditating. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Satan hates that. He'll do anything he can to keep you from opening your Bible, reading it, and stopping and mulling and taking that word as you walk around and listening to it and thinking about it. There's such power. And we don't, you know, we can know theology. We can know the Bible. That's historical theology if it's not fresh daily bread. That's like trying to, today, you know, don't, don't, don't take physical bread. How many days are you going to die after not taking fresh physical bread? It's the same way with spiritual bread. And you can't make a Wednesday class or small group class or study or Sunday school class substitute for your own personal private reading the word and meditating. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's good and you need to do it, but it's not enough. It's not enough. And so Satan tempts Jesus and I'm gonna tell you, he uses the sword of the spirit, the Bible says, which is the word of God to battle the temptations of Jesus. You better know that word. It, the sword of the spirit, the spirit, sword, sword is a weapon. You fight with it, not defense, a weapon. You fight the devil with it. And Jesus pulled that sword out and he whacked the devil's big toe off and whacked the devil's big thumb off, maybe all of them at once, I don't know, with the word. And he, would, he didn't fall. Now, that's not really biblical, but it would look like some of you are getting tired of hearing me talk. But I mean, he might have done that. I'm not sure. I wasn't there. Use your imagination. But Jesus is truth. John 14, 6, Jesus told his disciples after he said he's going to go away, he's going to die, he's going to go to heaven, he's going to make a place for him. He says, he, they said, well, how are we going to get there? And Jesus said, I am the way to heaven. I'm the way of life. I'm the way of, you should live. There's a way this seems right to man in their own thinking, which the whole world is going, we're thinking this. We don't look at the Bible because it's not authoritative and they have their own way. But it's, the Bible says that it leads to destruction, damnation. But Jesus said, I'm the way. And he's the truth. Truth. Jesus is truth. The incarnate son of God. God Almighty is truth. The word is truth. Jesus prayed for the disciples that they would be sanctified or become holy. Like I'm asking you to really consider your holiness. And he said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is true. Jesus is true. Jesus is truth. And this truth is fighting for you. Jesus is fighting for you. He's fighting for you and your family. He's fighting. John 8, 31. We're going to read a long text here. If you make, make a note uh, of the text, I want you to re go back and mull this throughout the week. To the Jews who had fought, believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Wow. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever, a son rather. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I've seen in the, my father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you're looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, yet that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. They said, we, aren't, we are not Ill illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. And Jesus said to them, if, you, if God were your father, you would love me. 
for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. The second point, not only are we at war against Satan and his demons, we are at war against lies. Lies. I mean, right away, he asks a question, and then he says, well, if you eat from the fruit, you'll be like a little God. <sighs> Who's the authority? A God is authority. Why do you think people don't want to subject to God and his truth and the word? They want no authority in their life. I want to tell you, there are six truths that are truth that you need to take a picture of these as we go. Get your cameras out so you don't forget. Six truths we must know and not compromise. And there are many others, but in our culture, I want to lay these down for you with love and tr with truth. Jesus, I pray you'd help us open our heart and mind and receive this. Receive it, we pray, Jesus. Amen. Help our hearts. All right, number one, God's word is truth and the standard of all that is writing right and wrong. John 17, 17. God's word is truth and is the standard of all that is right and wrong. Sect number two, God designed us male and female. Genesis 127. And men are not superior to women. Galatians chapter 3, 28. Now let me say women are different than men. Okay? But what I'm saying and, and, and says, well, a man's responsibility is like Christ to love his wife and die for her and lead her spiritually, spiritually responsible. But what I'm what is saying is the people that take the scripture and mess it up and they go, the man's in charge, and they go, you know, I'm going to go buy a car. Well, well, I don't know if we can afford that. It's not, just be quiet. I'm buying a car. I'm the man in the house. I'm getting the car. You know, hey, hey, woman, bring me the, bring me the, give me the newspaper. I need a cup of coffee. They're like, they're the master. They're not, they're the servant. The man represents Jesus. We prefer one another by the man, the husband, laying his life down for his wife and his kids and being a spiritual leader. They're responsible to present their bride to Christ spotless, okay? So just know, I just want to make sure you don't hear the wrong thing there. Men are not superior to women. Number three, God designed each person with beauty and purpose, and we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and life begins at conception. Psalm 139, 13 to 16. Number four, God designed sex within the confines of marriage between a man and a woman, Genesis 1, 28. Inside marriage, not with a computer by yourself, not with a magazine, not with a, a male and female outside of marriage, but inside marriage between a man and a woman, husband and wife. You see it confirmed by Moses. You see it confirmed by Jesus. You see it confirmed by the Apostle Paul. Number five, God designed all races with equal value and worth. Acts 10, 34, 35. Number six, God loves all and Jesus died for all in order to save all who would call upon the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 9 to 13. These truths are being assaulted as many others are. Even the idea that the Bible is the authoritative rule of faith and conduct or that all the Bible is not true or that, you know, enlightened human beings know now that, that the ancient writ of the Bible is in, in error because in their mind they've studied science and it, it rids the Bible of truth. It's, that, is, that is false. That is false. And those of you, and I, we've preached this over and over for 33 years, and some of you are newer. I just want you to know, we're not moving from that position. 
And we love people that don't agree with us here, but we're not moving from this position, okay? I have loved ones that, that have issues with, you know, that are blind in some of these areas and, and uh, in, in, in Texas, uh, and one of them's dead. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, I just want you to know, and I'm sure some of you do, that's not a personal attack on any of your loved ones or people that you know that, that are living together out of wedlock or whatever else is going on. The third thing I want you to see is that w there's a war against not only that it's a war uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, we're in a war against Satan and the demons and we're at war against his lies, but we're at a war against, that we're at war that Satan is warring against you and your family. He's warring. I, I just want to say that, uh, you know, it's so important that, that you are intentional in teaching your children Last night I had a discussion with Austin's son, Sam, who's eight. And I said, man, I just love, I love you so much and you're, you, you just have such a right heart and you make such good choices. You're such a, a good boy. You follow Jesus and all that. And, and, you know, your mom and dad, they're teaching you and living it and all that. And he goes, well, why would you be surprised? He says, that's the way my mom and dad are. That's the way I am. That's the way you are. That's why Austin's the way he is. And I'm, it's like one more step. That's just who we are. Do you hear what he said? <clears throat> what you say, if it's not like James said, don't just be hearers, but doers of the word. The way you live transfers. Pastor Wheat's always said, you can't transfer what you don't possess. If it's not in you, you can't transfer it. And let me tell you, being honest when you are wrong, being honest when your flesh makes mistakes and asking forgiveness of your children or your, your grandchildren or your friends or your wife or whoever, that goes a long way. Because you're not going to be perfect, but you got to be. And you got to remember something. The devil's after your kids and your grandkids, and we got to we gotta fight. We got to fight. You know, the song, Battle Him, it says, as, as he died to make men holy, the actual words are, let us die to make men free. But since we're not fighting a battle, we changed it for our choir number, let us live to make men free. And I'll explain that in just a second, what I'm saying, because if we had to go and fight for freedom, then people would die for that. And the Satan is the reason of wars. And let me tell you, a lot of people have died. War is not okay. There was a group back in 69 when all the Motown stuff was going on. The song goes, war. <coughs> what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Ooh, 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 war. And it's not. You, sometimes we're forced into it. Boy, if we hadn't gone to war in World War II, what would the world look like now? Sometimes we do. So sometimes you do have to die. But we don't have to die. We have to live. We have to live. Preaching and proclaiming the gospel and winning people to Jesus so the blind can see and the lost can be found. Here's the war chapter. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And, and it says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, then stand firm with the belt of truth, the word of God, guys. Stand on the word. Believe it. Don't back off. The word of truth, the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The breastplate of righteousness in place. That's the belief that we're saved by grace through faith. The blood of Christ cleanses us and that Jesus is our righteousness righteousness and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace this is the attack thing you got boots that go anywhere no matter how slippery the ground to give the gospel of peace to preach the gospel to share the gospel to live the gospel to win the blind and the lost and in addition to this take up the shield of faith which can extinguish all the flaming flaming arrows of the evil one god's dead if god loved you that wouldn't have happened Lie from the devil. Anything does, everything does. Jesus said this, listen. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. 
This is a fallen world. When something happens to your loved one, that's Satan take that took your loved one. When something tragic happens, Satan is involved some way. I'm telling you, he is. Flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation. And this, don't lose your salvation. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author, finisher of your faith. That's what he's saying, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then he says, the other thing you do so that you can fight this battle and win the war for you and your family, he says, is pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. That's understanding and not understanding. It's intercession, all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Man, don't go to sleep. Wake up, look, open your eyes and look around you. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. That's the battleground. And the point that I was, that I forgot to put the words up, if you go back to it, is, is the d daily read the word and pray. I don't even know if, I, if that's on the slide or not. Daily Daily read the word and pray. This is it, guys. Listen, this is the basics. Okay, this is like water and bread. If you don't do this, you're losing. You're gonna lose your kids and grandkids. You're gonna get to heaven and they're not gonna be there. Whatever you do in moderation that's sinful, your children will do in excess. Write that down. Whatever you do in moderation that is sin, you go, a little sin. Well, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little sin grows. Whatever you do in moderation that's wrong, your children will grow up and they'll take it to a new level. They're permitted to do that. They'll take it to excess. So here are the action points. Get ready for your pictures, okay? Get your phones out. I know you care. You like to use them in church anyway. Do something good with them. Ooh, that came out nasty. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes the serrated rusty saw comes out on me and it doesn't pleasant. It's supposed to be a well-sharp sword that you don't feel it, but it changes you. All right, live holy. Second Peter, I'm gonna read this. 3, 10 to 12. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with the roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, not by a flood, but by fire it will be. And the earth and everything done and it will be laid bare. You don't want to be here. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to be loved holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in heat. Live holy, folks. Second thing, spiritually lead your home. Deuteronomy 6, starting in verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord yourself with all with your God, with all your heart and all your soul and with all your strength because your kids are watching. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. Impress them. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. In other words, here little, there little, all day long, everything how does God think about this? How does God view this? What is that right? Don't let anything go. You're not talking about God constantly. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Make it obvious. Like don't, they, no, no question, they know where you stand on everything. Write them on the door frames of your houses, on your gates. Put scripture on your walls. Do something. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive gardens grows that you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Let me summarize it. When your, land, when your country gets prosperous, don't forget God. America, wake up. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow, do not follow other gods, the gods of peoples around you. For the Lord your God is among you, a jealous God and its anger will burn against you and he will destroy you from the face of the land. You got that one? Spiritually lead your home. Number, the next one, stand strong and defend truth. Second Timothy 4, 3. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Doctrine is basic teaching, scripture, truth in scripture. They will not put up with it. Are we there? Uh, hello. <laughs> Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Don't make me feel bad about my sin. Don't, don't read that scripture. Don't read, don't read Romans 1 or that. Don't, don't read those things. Don't, that make me feel bad. I'm going to hurt my cousin's feelings. We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings and you don't need to be ugly with people. But it does say, 
it does say defend the truth. Stay strong. Don't, don't water it down. That's what's wrong with America, the churches. Then the next one is be fruit-filled. Galatians 16, 20, to 20, 16 to 26, which is the New Living Translation. It says this. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you're not free to carry out your good instructions. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will block people's thinking that, my goodness, this is long. I don't get to preach very often. I worked really hard. You're going to listen to me. Don't you be leaving. Okay, that's, that's enough. I'm just saying, you listen to this. But when you're directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Here they are, sexual immorality of all kinds, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, divisions, evil, envy, drunkenness, and with wild parties and sins like these, let me tell you again, as I've told you before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. And there's a lot of things in there that aren't just sexual sin. Do you see that? But God, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. And those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have nailed the passions and sinful desires of their, the desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. The last thing, and I close as the musicians come, be salt and be light. Matthew 5, 13 to 16. In other words, Jesus left saying, I'm going to give the Spirit, go win the world. If you don't have any salt or light, you just have a message, a theology, it ain't going to affect anybody. See, light makes you do like this, like, oh my goodness, I don't want to think about that. It like confronts you. Salt has taste. It says, oh, taste and see the Lord is good. I mean, with your life, do people think, oh, the Lord is good? I mean, Really? So Matthew 5, 13, 16, you're the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works, good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So we need to do these, these are the steps. We need to pray, 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 pray. Be full of the Spirit and pray. Witness, be involved with everything in your kids are involved in. You know, when they go to school, you better know what's going on. You don't just drop them off anywhere not knowing. You better know what's happening. You be active, you be, you, you be a, alert. Pay attention to Satan's lies and anti-Bible cultural trends. Pay attention to them. Pray about running for office. Maybe you're the person that can have influence by winning. And my goodness, pray Read, know what you're doing, and vote. Vote everywhere. Vote every school board election. Vote everything there is. Remember this, this war is not against the lost and the blind. This is a spiritual war, and it's against Satan and his demons, and it's against the lies of the devil. And we need to be fighters in the spirit because this is a spiritual warfare. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's principalities and powers and wickedness in dark places. So we have to be spiritual people pulling down strongholds in the name of Jesus by the Spirit and the Word. Amen. Did you know that Satan is preparing to rule the world? We see it. One world money system, one world government. There are 15 major international organizations that he's got representatives in everyone. I don't know all the people, but if there's a world organization, Satan wants to rule the world, you know he's got someone that he's influencing on those boards. And they are the United Nations Organization, the United Nations Children's Fund, the World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum, International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the World Trade Organization, United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, Association of Southeast Nations, Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the New Development Bank, BRICS Development Bank, Asian Development Bank, Worldwide Fund for Nature, I'm going to tell you, we see what's happening. We know it's going to happen. But nowhere in the Bible does it say because you know something's going to happen, you roll over. <laughs> Don't let the evil and the lies 
overwhelm you and your family and suck you in. You stand strong and you pray and you fight for those precious little kids because you may make heaven, but if you don't fight, if you don't fight on your knees and in the spirit, if you don't live holy, your kids, your grandkids may not be there. And I think, oh man, I want to see my daddy. I want to stay close to Jesus. I want to keep my eyes on Jesus, the author, finisher of my faith. Amen? Amen. Would you bow your head? Father, I pray you'd forgive us our sins and heal our land. If my people will humble themselves and return from their sin, repent, call on your name, God. If we'll do it first, you'll begin to move in our nation. Obviously, I believe that scripture. And obviously, we're battling only in the world of the culture, not the world of the spirit. And that we're not looking at ourselves and getting it right and being full of God. Help us drip with the spirit. Help us stand firm on the truth. Help us fight for our children and grandchildren. Help us, Lord, not faint and weary, be weary of well-doing. In Jesus' name, with every head bowed and closed, eyes closed. If you're here and you say, I need to be more holy, or maybe I need to get closer to Jesus, or maybe I've never come fully in relationship with Jesus, and I need to do one of those three. I need to be more holy. I need to get more serious. I need to pray more, read the word more. I need to be more holy like Jesus. I need to get right with God, or I need to come to Christ for the first time. Would you just lift your hand, everyone across the board, raise it up those of you not raising your hand means you're holy enough you don't need more holiness that's what you're saying I need to be more holy I need more Jesus I need the fullness of God I need the fruit to drip in me or maybe I need to repent Jesus we call on you we want to be in relationship with you come we don't want theology we don't want denominationalism we don't want we don't want uh, just a form of religion we want the power of God we need your Holy Spirit the sword of the word of God to rise up that we can fight the enemy. Satan, you're a liar and the truth is not in you and we bind you in Jesus' name for every one of our children and grandchildren for all these people in this church. We bind you, Satan. You have no authority here. Jesus, you have all authority here. We give you authority. We invite you to come and we pray this prayer, Father, in your name. Let's stand together.